Welcome back to The Creepy Files. Five Nights at Freddy's fan games have become an entire subgenre at this point. With so many fan games coming out all the time, and many of them being of subpar quality, it's important to look back and realize why these games are relevant and how they've changed the gaming landscape. I remember the first FNAF fan game I played, one that was likely the first FNAF fan game ever. Five Nights at Treasure Island. This game terrified me more than any official Five Nights at Freddy's game ever has, and to this day, it's the most scary experience I've had playing a game. I have videos on my channel of it when I was a lot younger. I literally started shaking. My soul has nothing to do with this. I'm literally shaking. Can you see it? I think this game was so effective for a couple reasons. One, it was the first of its kind. People really hadn't played a FNAF game outside of the canon. It brought something new, and that fear of the unknown elevated it. The second thing, I think, was the lack of polish. The game seemed rough, unpredictable. It felt like a real-life creepypasta game. It crashed when you closed it, it was full of disturbing yet unrefined imagery, and the audio quality wasn't great. That, coupled with some of the game design choices that made it truly terrifying, Goofy's eyes opening and closing, and Oswald's horrifying voice, and the game quickly showed just how scary a fan game could be. In my mind, the next big evolution in FNAF fan games was Five Nights at Candy's. Not only was this game successful, it showed something very important about these fan games. They can be of real quality. Sure, the first Candy's game was essentially a clone of the first FNAF game, but it was a clone of quality. The graphics are good, everything feels nice and snappy and responsive, and as more of the Candy's games came out, they became more unique, but stayed of great quality. Especially Candy's 4, bringing a lot of great storytelling techniques and the final evolution of FNAF fan games, The Joy of Creation by Nixon. As far as I can tell, this game kickstarted the whole trend of free roam Unreal Engine FNAF games. Not only was this game incredibly unique at the time, it made it feel like you were playing a AAA title, and as the game continued to update, it brought more quality and scares the whole way through. So what exactly is so important about these fan games? What made them so influential? I think FNAF unleashed a wave of indie developers the likes of which we hadn't seen since the Slender the Eight Pages game. People who had never even attempted to make a game before started learning how to use Game Maker, Click Team, and Unreal Engine to bring their ideas and twists on the FNAF concept to life. While many people took the basic concept of FNAF and created original IPs like Boogeyman and continued existing IPs like the AAA Alien Isolation sequel, but those are different. The fan games are explicitly linked to the game itself. And I think it's something special for a game to spawn so many fan games, to inspire so many developers to create. And now, the indie game landscape has changed forever. Just look at Game Jolt, an entire category for FNAF games, filled with literally thousands and thousands of fan games. The only comparable thing I can think of is the Slender games, but this trend has lasted for years longer than the Slender era. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that FNAF fan games are something special, and not only are they an interesting evolution of creativity from the FNAF community as a whole, it's also created a lasting effect on the indie horror game landscape in general. What did you think about this episode of The Creepy Files? Let me know in the comments, and tell me what you think I should cover next on my Twitter or Instagram. See you all next time.